number one. And you've heard this before. You've probably seen this on other channels. Do not exchange your money in Costa Rica, especially at the airport. You are going to more or less get ripped off. However, I will tell you this. Most of your credit cards will give you a very good exchange rate if you use the ATM or when you use it for purchasing at restaurants, bars, uh, and uh, uh, functions and that sort of thing. Now, Jane and I, we cashed in $300 worth of colonies and in eight days, we had a hard time spending that $300 in colonies because we were able to use our credit cards for literally almost everything except for the small shops. Number two. This kind of goes hand in hand with don't exchange your money at the airport or at any place other than a bank or through your ATM and that's do not use dollars. You will never, you will never get a good exchange rate using dollars and that exchange rate in, in uh, bars, restaurants and other places is so bad that you'll lose any money that you otherwise would have saved. Number three. which is don't expect your grandfather's, your father's, or your uncle's prices in Central America anymore. I've been going to Central America since the double O's, and I'll tell you, I have seen the prices slowly increase until it just hit that curve, where now uh, we live in Houston, and we are basically paying Houston prices when we go out to eat in Costa Rica. And that is because they tack on the 10% service fee, which I think is very good to begin with. And they tack on the 13.9, 14.3, whatever it is, uh, uh, tariff or tax on any items that you buy. So you put those two together and you know, you're looking at around almost almost 30% additional to what your, your, your prices on a menu will say. Just tack on 30% to that. So go there with an open mind that you're, you're not going to save as much money as you may have heard that you would save in the past. Number four. Along with that, don't expect your food to come out at any restaurant quickly, unless of course you go to a McDonald's or a Wendy's or something like that. The good side of that is your food is generally prepared fresh. The bad side of it is you need to factor in enough time to wait for the food when it does come out. Number five. You don't always have to expect to eat at an expensive restaurant or one of the touristy restaurants. We would go out of our hotel twice in the seven days that we were there. We went out of our hotel, we took a left, and we went to the chicken shack that was right around the corner. Those full meals of chicken, potatoes, and plantain ran us about $3 each. We just went and ate on the balcony of our hotel, and it was a really nice dinner. It was, it was nice to take a break from the restaurants and just sit at home and, and have a nice meal and uh, put a little bit of uh, relief on your wallet at the same time. Number six. Don't overpack. Now, everyone says this. This time, and it still takes me time to get used to this, but this time, the eight days we were there, I took seven shirts. I took two button-down shirts and I took two fishing shirts. The other shirts, I didn't even need. Because, those, because of the material those shirts were made out of, we just, uh, we just washed them in the bucket. I did take two pairs of shorts, well, I took one pair of shorts, one pair of swimming trunks, 
and one pair of blue jeans. And once I got there, I never wore the blue jeans hardly at all, except to go out to dinner. If you pack light on the clothes end, if you're like us, you'll have more room for the fishing gear. And the, so everyone says don't pack a lot, but really, you do not need to pack a lot when it comes to clothes. And with that, let's get into what might be the most important don't yet. And that is, do not forget to pack sunblock. We went into this store to buy some, uh, just to buy some beer and stuff. And I walked past the sunblock that was behind a lock, a lock window shelf. So everything else in the store was priced about what we would pay for in Houston at a convenience store or something like that. Very little difference. So I asked them to price it. I said, how much is that sunblock? They didn't even know how much the sunblock cost because they sell it so rarely. That $9 bottle of sunblock, $41. Man, that makes me think that I should probably buy about 10 bottles of sunblock and sell it out at the Dominical Beach or something to all the surf. But I think that's illegal, so we won't do that. But anyway, do not, whatever you do, forget sunblock, sun tanning oil, or any of those skin skincare products because the prices are so high in Costa Rica because of the tariff situation of which I'm not educated enough to talk about. Number eight. I spent 34 years in the military. Whenever we deployed or we went TDY or we went to some other country, it was banged into our head. Don't wear military specific gear. Don't identify yourself. Don't stick out. I would have to ask, why do you want to be this guy and his wife? And why would you want to call yourself out from a, a crowd as a tourist? I would just think for the safety of your children or your spouse, while you're traveling in Costa Rica, I think that you're unnecessarily calling yourself out. And uh, I don't know for what reason by having the military backpacks with all the patches on it and stuff like that. I'll just leave it at that, but if you want to have a discussion about it down below, uh, you know, if it bothers you at all, I, I will do it. But I would just say, someone needed to tell you. Admire your luck, Mr. Bond. James Bond. Mr. Bond, I suppose you wouldn't care to um, raise the level. I love gambling. But again, in the 20 years I've been going to Costa Rica, I've never seen a casino that I was fully happy with. First of all, blackjack is illegal in Costa Rica. So if you don't have blackjack, in my mind, you're not really gambling anyway. But what they do have is they have a, a thing called three card rummy. All I would say is I have seen a lot of groups of guys say, oh man, we're going down to Costa Rica, we're gonna gamble, we're gonna drink, we're gonna have some fun. But you get yourself so hyped up that you work yourself into gambling when maybe you are opening yourself up to a lot of drama. Now, I will say this, in San Jose and in the resort, those are the better casino. If you're going to a casino that is not in a resort hotel, that's used to dealing with a lot of foreigners because they have their reputations to uphold, I certainly would not gamble there. But overall, when I go to Costa Rica, uh, I, I don't even get really hyped up about gambling in uh, Costa Rica. And, and for your good, I would say, uh, don't you either. Uh, just one war story, you know, had a friend, we were all down there gambling, like I'm telling you we shouldn't. And he got rolled right outside the casino. And so here we are on day two of a five-day vacation. He doesn't have his credit cards, he doesn't have his ID, he doesn't have any money. He spent the rest of his three days getting ID and getting permission to leave the country. Uh, I'm not saying that would happen with everybody, but when you involve yourself in certain aspects of countries, you, you have to be aware that certain things could happen to you. So at any rate, but those are my nine don'ts. I hope they were helpful. I hope I was just being honest. Uh, I don't mean to offend anybody. And if you have any comments, put them below and I'll be glad to explain my position on any one of those don'ts. Till then, have a great day. Bye.